Hello and welcome to this episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I am Krish Mohan. Dictionary.com defines man as an adult male person as distinguished from a boy or woman, a husband, a male lover or sweetheart, a male employee or representative. Over the generations, the definition of what makes a man a man has changed. From the dawn of time, men were considered to be fearless and stoic and emotionless. The role of a man in society was to be a conqueror and protect the things he conquered. The three things that always defined a man were physical prowess, sexual conquest, and economic success. In the early days of humanity, men were hunter-gatherers. They would go out there and they would fight these beasts hand to hand. They would take what they want, including women. They gave in to all their urges and vices. I mean, the definition of a man at that point was through his physical ability and his sexual conquests. But in today's day and age, you don't have to give in to your vices or have that many sexual conquests. Most progressive men today have a record number of cross-gender friendships. That's right, there are men out there that are going and befriending women and putting themselves in the friend zone for the sake of their masculinity. They're, they're going up to other men saying, hey, 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 don't you objectify my female friend here, all right? She's more than just an object. She's my friend, my very, very attractive friend, but she's a friend. And the power to resist that urge is really what makes you the manliest man of all. As time passed, men became conquerors. And that was what defined you to be a man, to go out there and conquer the world. By that definition, the two manliest men at this point would have been Caesar and Napoleon. That's right, a really short dude and a guy that wore half a dress were considered to be the most masculine people around. But you have to think, why were they going out there and conquering everything? Clearly, Napoleon had a vertical problem, and Caesar, well, he just had a problem with picking out what toga he needs to wear that day, which is why he needed to find all the togas all across the world to find that perfect toga. That's really what the Roman Empire was about. It was about finding that perfect toga. Now, this means that masculinity was really defined by insecurity. But today, men don't have to be insecure about being conquerors or not because women are stepping up to that plate and also being conquerors. Since that song, I Can Do Anything You Can Do Better came out, women have been getting into everything that men can. Really, that song is what sparked the female revolution in the 60s where they were burning all the bras. That's what it was about. At that point, dudes were just burning bras all over the place and women were like, hey, we can do that better, henceforth women revolution, now they can vote. You know, that song is a lot more powerful than what people give it credit for. But since that time, women have been getting involved in anything that men can. They, they fight in wars, they play all the masculine sports that are out there, they're lifting weights, they're punching people in the face, they're hunting, they're gathering, they're, all, they're also banging a lot more. Moving forward, we go into the days of Mad Men, where they were stoic and emotionless and they were fearless. They didn't want, need, or feel, or anything. They were pretty much robots. Cool, sexy, sleek, cigarette smoking, debonair robots. But in today's day and age, it's actually pretty acceptable for a guy to weep in public, or interpret art, or make a nice keen why. Being a robot is as antiquated as the film The Day the Earth Stood Still while you're watching it on an 8mm film. And really, the remake of that was pretty awful too. In films now, robots are actually having more emotions than the men of the 60s. Did you ever see iRobot? I mean, that robot was feeling all sorts of feelings for Will Smith, and Will Smith didn't even reciprocate. You know, I don't understand why Will Smith just couldn't see that robot for what he was. A symbol for change and the singularity. Oh, I get it. Okay, that's terrifying. The definition of a man in that era was through economic success, which led to sex then also led to more economic success, which then led to more sex, and then it was just this vicious cycle of everybody just making money and having sex, making money and having sex. That doesn't sound too bad. But today, women are working a lot more. In fact, they're actually doing even better in school. 
this is actually a true statistic, is that there are way more men dropping out of high school and college than women are. Based on that, there are actually a lot more stay-at-home dads, which is really gonna change the type of films you see on the Lifetime Network. Besides, sexual conquest isn't just for men these days. Women are just as kinky as men are. I mean, they have porn sites dedicated to them, they got dildo parties, they have their own brand of beers and whiskeys. Hell, they have their own brand of cat calls that they throw out to men. So women are doing pretty well in the sex game. Despite all these cultural changes, there are still a lot of men out there that are emotionally stoic and define themselves through these old ideologies of what masculinity is. Because of that mentality, it's really holding men back. So really the question comes to, what is the definition of a man today? Former lineman Joe Ehrman says the definition of a man is someone that can love and be loved. The definition of a man is changing from someone that can be strong and also a nurturer. This is something women have been doing for years and generations and I think it's time for men to step up to the plate because that's something we can do better. But really, the definition of masculinity, according to dictionary.com, is pertaining to or the characteristics of being